What's up, X and YouTube? Today, we're going to talk about That's Right, Concord. In my opinion, there are a couple of reasons why Concord is failing, right? So we do have the woke aspect of it. We do have a little bit, uh, you know, the lack of content, which MMOs suffer from today. Let me, I'll get into that in a second. And then we have the fact that there is a barrier to entry. What do I mean by that? Let's check it out real quick. I'll show you. What does that say? Buy Concord, $39. Digital Deluxe, $60. Content for this game, edition upgrade, $20. Hero shooters, okay, if you want to be successful, hero shooters need to have a $0, you know, a $0 barrier to entry, and then you make it up with microtransactions. Why is that? Because so a lot of times hero shooters are skewed to a younger audience. audience they're skewed towards streamers, right? And streamers have to buy all these games, so it's hard for them to stream because smaller streamers don't have the money. So it's good for them to be able to get into a shooter that's free, they could they could play it for their audience. The other, the other issue with it is people like instant gratification now, right? So think of it like a casino, okay? If you had to pay to get in the casino, would you go to the casino? No, nobody would go into the casino if you had to pay to get in. That's basically what this is. Hero shooters that have a uh, a physical price, a barrier to entry, nobody's going in. This is a casino. Nobody wants to go into this casino. You have to pay to get in. I'm not going to that casino. I'm going to go to Overwatch or whatever, wherever I got to go, uh, whatever free shooter there is, I'm going to go to that casino because I can gamble and I don't have to pay, have a barrier of entry. How does that relate to the game? Well, it's called dopamine, right? You all know about dopamine and you want the dopamine hit. In our uh, generation today, millennials, Gen A, Gen Y, uh, Gen Z, we all like instant gratification. Let's be honest here. We spend tons of money on microtransactions. That is proven. We spend tons of money on mobile games. Why is that? Because we get a hit, we get a hit of dopamine. And that's the thing too. If you're in the younger, younger audience, you might not have 40 or $50 either that week but you might have $10 to spend every every couple of weeks. And before you know it, you're spending you know $150 on the game that would you would have normally only spent $40. You see what I'm saying? So if you take out that barrier of entry, you're gonna have a basis for success. You're gonna be a lot more successful with that barrier of entry gone. Get rid of it and you're going to be better off. And I get that developers and companies, they wanna recruit their opportunity cost. Okay, everything has an opportunity cost. They want to recruit their R&D. They want to recruit, recruit their, you know, their loss. They, they have a sunk cost and they want to recruit all that back. So having a physical price, a barrier to entry, usually you get that money back quicker. But as we see here, it can backfire. This barrier of entry for Concord is probably the number one reason why it is failing in my opinion. Because even if the game was bad, People would play it free to play just to, to, to have meme content. People would have it free to play just to uh, mess around on stream. I don't think it would have failed if it was free to play, honestly. I, I don't know, but I, I don't think so. Now, it is woke. It does have all kinds of weird stuff in it. Like I said, this channel isn't going to really get into po po politics, but it, it has weird characters that aren't as aesthetically pleasing as you would like. And you might be like, oh, you're bigoted or you don't like certain kinds of people. It's not about that. It's about when you play a game, you want your character to be as aesthetically pleasing as possible. It's not what you see on a daily basis, right? Meaning if I go to Walmart and I see just average people, I'm not going to be like, oh, look how ugly that person is. Look how stupid that or whatever it is. Right. But I'm also not playing them as a character in a video game. Right. I don't want to jump into a video game and play a Walmart character. That's basically, that's what Concord is, okay? Concord is playing playing Walmart characters in a Euro shooter. Nobody wants to do that. So that's one of the other reasons that it's failing because it, not necessarily woke, but the characters aren't aesthetically pleasing. That's the number one thing in Hero shooters, like Overwatch. Overwatch has cool effing people. Everybody looks cool in Overwatch. I don't know one bad character in Overwatch that isn't doesn't have a good design. Another big reason is, you know, the lack of content and things like that. So there is a lack of content in the game, a lack of modes, et cetera, et cetera. And the problem with that is they're trying to compete with hero shooters that have been around a long time. And we see that with RPGs. We see that with MMOs a lot, right? 
the player base is, is used to playing Overwatch or they're used, used to playing, um, you know, Valorant or some other hero shooter where there's a ton more content because the game has been out longer. Now, if you're developing a game, you release it, there's no way to really catch up to that. So you have to have a lot, you have to have a lot of updates. The best example that I can give is Diablo 4. That's right. Diablo 4 updates so much. They update so quick that they have caught up. And we see that it's a huge success. And now there's like 500,000 players each season. Dude, they had to ratchet that stuff up, right? And millions of players overall, accumulatively, they had to ratchet that up. They had to really start pumping out content to bring those people back. So yeah, you're going to have a dip with content, but you need to pump it, pump it back up. That's another reason why having a microtransaction based game is better for that. And Diablo did have that, but also at a physical price. But that's a different story is that you have the development cost to keep it going. You don't have to give up opportunity cost for it, right? You can keep it going. So the X thread that inspired this video came here when I was searching around. You know, uh, Paul Tassi posted it first. We can see this is kind of new. Won't post Concord's final peak for the weekend, but it's bad. Won't be much more to talk about from here until they go free to play or Sony comment on the state of things. And you can hear, so wait, Paul, you, you can see the Twitter thread. So wait, Polly, you're telling me that people aren't lining up to play, to, up at the gates to play as this beauty? When you're playing a character, you want it to be the best of the best. You want to look cool. You want to be Superman or whatever. You know, Indiana Jones, et cetera. You don't want to be, you know, overweight. You, you don't want to do it. You don't want to play a Walmart character in your, your hero shooter. Now, Micah here, he, he does make a good point, too, because he points out that the game's underperforming because it has, you know, uh, a, a barrier or price entry. And then we see here this tweet is saying $40 isn't a big price tag. I think it is because younger audiences, they might not have $40, but they can have $5, 10 to buy the skins. We just talked about that. And he's right. You know, F2, F2P shooters are probably the most popular genre in gaming right now. Those games target young adults and teenagers. If you're going to ask a random teenager to fork out $40 for a shooter that wasn't marketed well, has little brand recognition, you're in a losing battle. True. He is 100% right. And I think that is the number one issue. And I think the way the characters look is probably number two. And then third is the content, right? Because if I'm a Twitch streamer or I'm making content and if it's free to play, like I said, I have no barrier to entry. If it has microtransactions, if I'm younger, I can use my allowance, right? To, to buy those microtransactions. I get that instant hit of dopamine. I don't have to pay a barrier of entry to get into the casino. I jump right in the casino and I get, you know, instant gratification, instant dopamine. The characters, I don't want to play Walmart characters in my hero shooter. That's another bad idea. So if they fix those three things, the game would be successful. They have to, they have to one, they have to add more aesthetically pleasing characters. They have to add more content. They have to make it free to play. They have to add uh, microtransactions that aren't too expensive. And then maybe, maybe the game can recover and they have to put it, their team has to put out updates really, really quickly. Like Diablo four did. That's the video. Those are my thoughts. F2P versus physically paying for the game. F2P is going to win in shooters every single time. That's just my opinion.